All right, get ready for a spine-chilling journey of murder and deceit. In this first part of our three-part series, we dive into the mysterious cases of 10 actresses who met untimely and unfortunate ends. From shocking murders to unsolved mysteries, we'll uncover the truth behind these chilling stories. It's time to venture into the world where fame meets foul play. Nicole Dufresne was a talented American playwright and actress whose life was tragically cut short. On January 27, 2005, a devastating incident occurred on the sidewalks of Manhattan's Lower East Side. Nicole, along with her fiancé and two other friends, were accosted and mugged by a group of seven teenagers in the early hours of the morning. The group of seven had already mugged a man for his leather jacket and menaced a girl at a subway station that same night. And when they came across Dufresne and her group, they demanded money, snatching her purse and assaulting another member of her group. They turned and ran, but the group of seven gave chase. As the group kept running, Dufresne stopped and confronted the attackers. What are you going to do? You going to shoot us? Is that what you want? She demanded. As she shouted those words, she walked up to Rudy Fleming, who seemed to be in charge of the gang, and looked him in the eye. Fleming reacted by pushing Dufresne in the chest with his left hand. Dufresne stumbled backward, then bounced back and shouted her question again. What are you going to do? Shoot us? Fleming pushed Dufresne a second time, and when she came at him again, he lifted his right arm and fired one bullet. The bullet struck Dufresne in the chest and exited through her back. Out of the seven individuals involved, three of them were convicted of murder and sent to prison. The remaining four, on the other hand, seem to have caught a lucky break and are facing much more lenient consequences. Daniela Perez started her career in acting at a young age, showcasing her natural talent and passion for the craft. She quickly gained recognition for her performances, captivating audiences with her looks, charisma, and dedication. She would go on to become a beloved actress who captured the hearts of many through her role in the Brazilian soap opera, De Corpo e Alma. She had a promising career ahead of her, filled with endless possibilities. However, tragically, her life was cut short. It's a tragic and shocking incident that took the life of Daniela Perez, a promising young actress. At just 22 years old, she was brutally murdered by her co-star Guilherme de Padua and his then-wife Paula Nogueira Thomas. The motive behind this heinous crime stemmed from Padua's envy and frustration over not receiving the screen time he believed he deserved. Additionally, his wife's jealousy towards Perez and the love scenes they shared in the soap opera played a role in their sinister plan. On that fateful night of December 28, 1992, Perez was ambushed by the duo and met with a gruesome fate, suffering from 18 stab wounds that pierced through her neck, lungs, and heart. Padua and Tomas were convicted of only second-degree manslaughter and were released after serving six of their 19-year sentence. All right, let's talk about Susan Cabot. She was an American actress who made her mark in the entertainment industry during the 1950s and 1960s. Born on July 9, 1927 in Boston, Massachusetts, Susan had a unique and captivating presence on screen. Susan appeared in numerous films throughout her career, showcasing her talent and versatility as an actress. Some of her notable works include The Wasp Woman, 1959, Sorority Girl, 1957, and War of the Satellites, 1958. She had a knack for portraying complex characters with depth and emotion. She was also involved in a highly publicized scandal involving an affair with King Hussein of Jordan. This added to her intriguing persona and kept the tabloids buzzing. Sadly, Susan's life was about to take a horrible turn. On December 10, 1986, a tragic incident unfolded in the Encino neighborhood of Los Angeles. Cabot's son, Timothy Scott Roman, who was only 22 years old at the time, was involved in a horrifying turn of events. He was charged with second-degree murder for bludgeoning his mother to death with a weightlifting bar. At trial, Roman testified that he had awakened his mother, who then attacked him with a barbell bar and a scalpel. Roman seized the bar from her and beat her repeatedly on the head. He then hid the bar and scalpel and told police that a man in a ninja mask had killed his mother. 
Roman's defense attorneys claimed their client's aggressiveness was due to the drugs he took to counteract his pituitary gland problems. At the close of the trial, prosecutors were forced to change the charge to involuntary manslaughter as no evidence had been presented at trial to support premeditation, which was required for a murder conviction. After just a brief 10-minute deliberation, Superior Court Judge Darlene Shemp made her decision and convicted Roman of involuntary manslaughter. This verdict came after Roman had already spent two years behind bars, awaiting his trial. As part of his sentencing on November 28, 1989, Judge Shemp ordered Roman to seek psychiatric counseling. However, there was a silver lining for him. He was given credit for the time he had already served in jail. With this credit and the completion of his probation period, Roman walked out of the courtroom as a free man. Yes, you heard that right. He walked out of court as a free man. It's an interesting case that highlights the power and responsibility or lack thereof that judges hold in our legal system. Gemma McCluskey had a promising career in the entertainment industry before her tragic and untimely death. She was a British actress known for her role as Carrie Skinner in the popular soap opera EastEnders. In addition to her work on EastEnders, Gemma also appeared in other television shows and films, further solidifying her presence in the entertainment industry. She had dreams of continuing to grow as an actress and had a promising career ahead of her. Sadly, Gemma's career was cut short at the hands of her own brother in 2012. In a tragic incident that shook East London in March 2012, Gemma McCluskey, a promising actress, went missing from her home. The community was left devastated when her body was later discovered in a local canal. The investigation revealed a heartbreaking truth. Gemma and her brother Tony had been involved in a heated argument that escalated tragically. The justice system took its course, and in January 2013, Tony McCluskey was found guilty of his sister's murder. He received a sentence of 20 years to life. Let's talk about the amazing career of Nita Blanca, a Filipino actress who made a significant impact in the entertainment industry. With over 50 years in showbiz, Blanca starred in more than 163 movies and 14 television shows. Her talent and dedication to her craft earned her recognition as one of the 15 best actresses of all time by Yes! Magazine. But sadly, her life would end tragically. On November 7, 2001, a tragic incident shook the community when Blanca was found brutally murdered in her car at the Atlanta Center in Green Hill, San Juan, Metro Manila. The details of the crime were chilling. She had been beaten and stabbed a horrifying 13 times. As the investigation unfolded, the prime suspect emerged, Blanca's own husband, Rod Strunk. Prosecutors alleged that he had hired a hitman to carry out this heinous act because Blanca had recently disinherited him from her will. The motive behind such a gruesome crime seemed to be rooted in financial gain, as investigators discovered that Blanca was worth an estimated $50 million. But if Blanca died before she was able to terminate her marriage, under the law, Strunk being the legal spouse, would be entitled to a portion of his estranged wife's inheritance, even though Blanca's will stated that everything would go to her daughter. <laughs> With things heating up in the Philippines, he fled to the United States to avoid prosecution. He now found himself entangled in a legal battle between the Philippine government and the United States. However, things didn't go as planned for the Philippine government. Their extradition request was denied by the U.S. court, leading to Strunk's immediate release from jail. It seemed like a stroke of luck for him, but unfortunately, it was short-lived. The Philippine government wasn't ready to give up just yet. They filed a second extradition case against Strunk in an attempt to bring him back and face justice. But before any further legal proceedings could take place, Strunk chose to end his own life on July 11, 2007 by jumping from a second floor balcony of the Tracy Inn in Tracy, California. Barry Berenson was an American actress, model, and photographer. Born on April 14, 1948 in New York City, she had a successful career in the entertainment industry before her life was tragically cut short. Berenson began her modeling career in the 1960s and quickly gained recognition for her beauty and unique style. She appeared on the covers of numerous fashion magazines and worked with renowned photographers such as Richard Avedon and Irving Penn. 
In addition to modeling, Berenson also pursued acting. She made her film debut in the 1970 movie Cat People and went on to appear in several other films throughout the 1970s and 1980s. However, Barry Berenson is perhaps best known for her work as a photographer. She had a keen eye for capturing candid moments and natural beauty. Her photographs were featured in various publications, including Vogue magazine. But Barry's life took an unexpected turn on September 11, 2001. She was aboard American Airlines Flight 11 when it was hijacked by those terrorist cowards and flown into the North Tower of the World Trade Center in New York City. This devastating event claimed the lives of many innocent people, including Barry. She was the widow of actor Anthony Perkins. Anthony Perkins was an American actor, director, and singer. He is most notable for the role of Norman Bates in Alfred Hitchcock's suspense thriller, Psycho. Barbara Colby was an American actress who was just a step away from stardom. She is best known for her work in television and film during the 1960s and 1970s. Born on July 2nd, 1939 in New York City, Colby began her acting career in the theater before transitioning to television and film. She made appearances on popular TV shows of the time, including the FBI, Ironside, and Medical Center. In addition to her television roles, she also appeared in films such as The Odd Couple, 1968, and Clutie, 1971. Sadly, Barbara Colby's promising career was cut short when she became the victim of a senseless act of violence. On the fateful day of July 24, 1975, tragedy struck actors Barbara Colby and James Kiernan as they were leaving an acting class in Palms, Los Angeles, California. As they made their way to their car in a parking area, they were suddenly shot. While Colby sadly lost her life instantly, Kiernan managed to provide vital information to the police before succumbing to his injuries. According to Kiernan's account, he did not recognize the two individuals who carried out the shooting. What makes this incident even more shocking is that it occurred without any warning or provocation. It was a common practice for Colby and her classmates to gather in the parking lot after their acting class and engage in conversation. Apparently, they were approached by two men in a light-colored van and were each shot once. Police said there was no attempt to rob the pair and concluded it was a random drive-by shooting or a targeted hit. The killers were never identified, and the case remains an open cold case. Pisa Palika was a renowned Cambodian ballet dancer and actress who made significant contributions to the entertainment industry during the 1980s and 1990s. She gained fame for her appearances in hundreds of films and thousands of karaoke videos, becoming a superstar in Cambodia's cultural scene. Unfortunately, Palika's promising career was cut short prematurely. The shooting incident that took place on the 6th of July, 1999, at Orasi Market in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, resulted in the tragic death of Palika. This incident gained significant attention and became one of the most high-profile killings in Cambodia's history. Despite its notoriety, no suspects have ever been identified or arrested in connection with the crime. Palika was shot by an unidentified male assailant while she was shopping at the market. Tragically, her seven-year-old niece was also wounded during the shooting. The severity of Pelika's injuries left her in critical condition, fighting for her life. She ultimately succumbed to her injuries seven days later. Her funeral attracted over 10,000 mourners, one of the largest attended ceremonies in Cambodian history. Rhea Mitchell was an American film actress and screenwriter. She left a lasting impact on the silent era of cinema. In her early career, she fearlessly took on challenging stunts in motion pictures, earning her the nickname The Little Stunt Girl. With over 100 films to her name, Mitchell's talent and dedication were undeniable. Her journey began when she signed with the New York Motion Picture Corporation, making her debut in the captivating film The Colonel's Ward. From there, Mitchell continued to captivate audiences with her performances and willingness to push boundaries. In a shocking turn of events, Mitchell, who was also the manager of a large apartment house in Los Angeles, met a tragic end at the hands of a disgruntled houseboy named Sonny Hartford Jr. The details are chilling. 
She was strangled to death with the cord of her own blue silk dressing gown within the very building she managed. Justice was served when Hartford was arrested and later pleaded guilty to second degree murder. In March 1958, he received a life sentence in prison for his heinous crime. Denise Morel, a talented actress, was born in Montreal, Canada on 3rd December 1926. She grew up in a working class family with seven children where she developed her passion for acting. Her first television appearance was in 1955 on the popular series Beau Temps, Mauvais Temps. Over the course of her impressive 30-year career, Morel took on many memorable roles. However, one of her most famous characters was Dame Plume from the beloved show La Riboulding. Unfortunately, despite her success and contributions to the entertainment industry, Morella's life would come to an abrupt end. On the evening of July 17, 1984, a tragic incident occurred in Montreal. Morel had planned to visit a ground floor apartment on Sanguinet Street that she was considering renting. The landlord had informed her that she could enter the apartment at any time as it was not locked. However, after visiting the apartment, Morel never showed up for a play in which she was scheduled to perform that evening. Mm. Concerned about her whereabouts, the police were alerted and began searching for her. Tragically, her lifeless body was discovered in the apartment the following day. She had been brutally beaten and strangled. What made this case even more perplexing is that there seemed to be no apparent motive for her murder. The investigation into Morel's death would remain unsolved for an astonishing 23 years. The case of the unsolved crime took a significant turn on August 8, 2007, when investigators from the Major Crimes Division of the Montreal Police made a breakthrough. They arrested Gaetan Bissonnette, a 49-year-old individual who had been identified through a DNA sample he had provided for a security job. His DNA matched that of the crime scene. On November 30th, 2007, Bissonnette faced justice and was sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole for 20 years. The use of DNA evidence played a crucial role in identifying and apprehending the perpetrator, highlighting its significance in modern criminal investigations. Mm -hmm.